Are you any boxing? Nothing in your shirt? No, sir. OK, because we have a female there that's going to search you. I don't have anything. Why? This isn't my first rodeo. Deputy White checked out with a disturbance at a local business south of where I was. And he gave out a vehicle description. And as I was driving towards him, I saw that vehicle pass me. I stopped the vehicle and made contact with the driver and passenger. Well, I noticed the driver was fidgeting with something down in the center console area. At 23.10. Hey, what was he reaching around for in the center? Who? Him when I pulled him over. He was running around the center. He had a drink sitting up there. Just a drink? Yeah. Was it alcohol? No, it was water. Yeah. Okay, I was just curious. Oh, I asked him if he could find a lighter maybe. That's why okay. I while talking to the female, I know she kept pushing something back in her shirt and her bra area. She was compliant. She didn't give me any issues. But when I started questioning her about what was in her shirt, after I noticed that she was pushing something back in, that's when she became very um, defensive. We have a female there that's going to search you. I don't have anything. Why? Because there's syringe caps in there and stuff like that. So. There was a gentleman that was in the car right before, like. The if there's nothing guy. on you, then you have nothing to worry about. All right. Well, I, 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 why am I being searched? It's not fair. And I have not done anything. There's caps. There's electrical caps in there. They look like syringe caps. They do. Ask him. Do they not? This isn't my first rodeo. Okay. Well, listen. I'm just telling you right okay. now. I've done nothing. He just bought this van. Other people riding this van. It's not me. So the female deputy didn't even search her. She started talking to her, and she pulled out a syringe and she pulled out a uh, like a cellophane wrapper with a, cap a clear capsule containing a white powdery substance which we suspected to be heroin or fentanyl. I do know that her boyfriend passed away, I believe it was from an overdose, and she was reiterating that story to me. Why, why weren't you just honest with me? I told you. I didn't want to get in trouble. Listen, I'm homeless. My boyfriend died. I, I know, My life is really I, I know, bad right I know now. who you are. I know your boyfriend died. Why are you using drugs though? Everything's falling to I lost my job. I lost my place to live. And the place we paid to move into, we can't even get in there because this COVID-19 so that can't evict people. And I'm on the street. How long have you been shooting for? I've been sober for 12 years, actually. I just relapsed when my boyfriend passed away. So ultimately, I got with my zone partners and we talked about it and we all kind of had the same uh, the same feeling as to, you know, hey, she's never been in trouble for drug related crimes with us. She's not a violent person. And, you know, she's going through a hard time. I personally thought that maybe I can give her some resources to help her out. You know, I tried so hard to get into rehab and they won't take you. And then it's like, listen, you listen. get so sick listen. and it's like, you can't even function. I can't even go to work unless I have something because I get so sick. We really don't want to take you to jail for something like this. Okay? It's a small <laughs> little dope charge. You're not a hardcore criminal. I've been trying criminal. to go to, like, I've been trying okay. to get to rehab. I'm Here, sick listen. of living like this. Listen to us. We have programs, so you will make it out just fine. So I personally believe that everyone deserves a second chance, um, especially someone that's actively seeking help. If in lieu of placing them under arrest, we can maybe lead them to the right source. If it's our first time being in contact with them, I think that might be a good answer.